Uh, good evening, and <clears throat> James, thank you for <clears throat> inviting me to uh, speak today. Uh, I am not an artist, as you know from my introduction, and uh, I guess wanted to tell you a little bit about the field guides as, uh, from the perspective of a user, and uh, also as a person who accommodates artists, I actually uh, always invite artists as much as I invite scientists to visit the Peabody collections, and thank you, and get to uh, meet and discuss certain problems that artists face when they work on field guides. I also, through my travel to some of these places that most people cannot uh, point on the map, uh, feel like I'm contributing maybe a little bit to uh, better understanding of the ranges of species and uh, clarifying some of the issues surrounding species limits that uh, James was alluding to. Uh, so. Uh, for example, for the country of Suriname, there is still not a bird field guide available. Uh, so that's uh, definitely a hole for somebody to fill. Uh, I will uh, mostly talk about bird guides, uh, obviously because of this is a vast uh, area. Uh, this photograph uh, shows our curator of birds and the professor in the ecology and evolutionary biology department, uh, Rick Pram, in the field with his students from the ornithology class uh, helping them identify birds. Uh, this is Ecuador, so the field guide is especially uh, chunky because that's one of the countries with the biggest number of bird species. Uh, normally, field guides are defined as uh, more portable, uh, small packet size almost, uh, books or increasingly now some digital devices uh, that allow you to identify uh, plants, animals, or some other natural objects uh, in the field. Uh, from a distance uh, frequently. Uh, so uh, it was quite a challenge to find actually what would be the oldest field guide available for North America, for example. Uh, from uh, some online research, I found this book by Florence Merriam Bailey. Uh, this is from 1889, and uh, if any of you actually know of early, earlier examples, I would love to know. Uh, this particular book, uh, uh, it could be called a field guide because of its uh, small uh, size and uh, because it explicitly talks about field marks and using binoculars. The title, uh, Birds Through an Opera Glass, Im implies that uh, the optics will be used. Uh, and, but the illustrations are not particularly useful for field identification. Uh, some, of, uh, uh, some of the people who actually work in the same uh, businesses uh, myself, like Frank Chapman from the American Museum of Natural History, also uh, attempted to uh, create field guides and are sometimes called pioneers uh, for field guides to birds. This particular book is from 1924, uh, What Bird Is That? And uh, it actually shows immediately uh, that he uh, most likely used museum collections uh, to generate these images, you can actually see that some of the perches are exactly as those you would find in museum, on museum shelves uh, with taxidermied uh, mounts. Uh, the idea of field guides, this is a different kind of art, and uh, especially the early ones often group uh, the subjects not according to some sort of scientific principle like phylogenetic relatedness, but often by overall similarity. In the example on the left, you actually see North American thrushes, uh, contrasted with some other brown, streaky LBJs, as we call them. Uh, and uh, those on the left represent at least four different families. Uh, I actually personally prefer the ones organized phylogenetically, uh, but uh, I understand why, for somebody who's a beginner, this would be an important way to learn the birds. Uh, this example on the right is another way of doing this, where you actually group the birds uh, by season. In this case, these are all immature warblers, as they would be seen in the fall if you actually attempted to identify. That's uh, one of the biggest challenges to birders in North America. And they, as you can see, are grouped by those that have spots in their tails uh, and those that don't, and also by the stratum of the forest. So all these little clues are great help when you actually attempt to identify these. Uh, this is a page from one of the guides I used as I was growing up back in Poland uh, by Desselberger. And uh, this is what some people critique or call it uh, uh, jokingly as a cookie cutter art. 
Uh, but amazingly, this actually works pretty well uh, for bird, bird identification in the field, having this kind of simplified image and uh, very predictably arranged. Uh, birds all face one direction. You can actually easily compare bill sizes and uh, tail lengths and so on. Uh, so that actually works well. Uh, so the, a different approach to uh, creating images for field guides is to actually uh, create scenes like uh, sort of museum dioramas where you actually put multiple images of a species within the context of their uh, sort of average habitat. And uh, this is an example from a European bird guide by a Swedish uh, artist Lars Jonsson uh, with two species of owls that share their habitat in, up in uh, uh, well, Scandinavia and Northern Europe. Uh, as all of you know, uh, here in North America, Roger Torrey Peterson, who's actually uh, native to Connecticut, uh, or was native, lived in Old Lyme, uh, is often uh, considered the father of modern field guides to birds and in general to, uh, he popularized the idea of field guides for other uh, plants and animals. Uh, so his uh, major innovation was to include these arrows uh, you can actually uh, see in the example on the left from the original uh, edition of his book uh, that these uh, not only include the arrow pointing to some uh, most important, uh, in his mind, uh, feature in the field uh, to look at, but also explain with the text what it is. So it's not just uh, pointing at the bill, but also says, look at the color rather than shape. Uh, on the right, this is from a later edition, and this is what uh, we have seen in the field guides for the last maybe 30 years. Uh, is to use these arrows without the descriptor and um, putting a lot of more text in the, uh, on the, page, in the f opposite page to the uh, plate. Uh, I actually prefer the other system and I was really happy uh, to see that this, it, came, it came back uh, with the publication of some of these new generation field guides for Europe and North America. Uh, this is my, uh, my most favorite uh, field guide uh, and it's actually a work of two Brits and two Swedes uh, Kilian Mularni and then Setterstrom are the artists and these are the people who uh, for me earn a lot of respect for spending a lot of time in the field knowing the birds extremely well and also being extremely uh, familiar with the I guess techniques to use to depict these. Uh, so some of the innovations here in addition to these arrows and text is that they also often put the little inset with the habitat uh, these birds occupy I purposely put here these drab birds because this is one of the biggest challenges for identification in the field, these Acrocephalus warblers in Europe. And having these uh, tools combined with the descriptions of songs, uh, it, uh, these slight differences in shape and uh, some features like primary extension, uh, basically how far the primary feathers of the wing extend beyond the uh, tertials or secondaries. Uh, that's actually something that in the past was used mostly only when you had a specimen in hand, but now increasingly with good optics, uh, we can actually even use this in the field. Uh, so many of you may have seen the Princeton oops, uh, edition of this uh, field guide, and this is, uh, it has gone already through one improved edition, and this is once a guide that I would recommend if you ever travel to Europe or Middle East or Northern, Northern Africa. Um, uh, the North American equivalent is the Sibley Guide. And this is uh, David Allen Sibley uh, from Massachusetts, whose father was my predecessor here at the Peabody Museum. And uh, he single-handedly painted all birds of North America in multiple views. Uh, this is, again, uh, what I love about these new guides, that these uh, images are arranged in a very predictable, systematic way where you have the adult male in a predictable position, so you can easily compare species A to species B. Uh, again, sometimes certain features that are included in insets are those obscure little things that normally were used only in hand, but now, uh, again, you can actually photograph these birds in the wild and often see how wide the primary feathers are. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, is just one example of many uh, pieces of art that is uh, out there. There are now uh, something in the order of 700 uh, field guides to birds uh, published. These are some of the newest uh, pieces of art from our own uh, uh, Michael DiGiorgio, uh, who's uh, one of the artists who visits the Peabody Museum. 
and uh, uh, he actually is now participating in a big project illustrating all the non-pastoring uh, birds of South America with Guy Tudor and Bob Ridgely. Uh, so the plate on the left is actually from this work uh, and uh, it's not yet published, but he allows, allowed me to show this. Uh, this is all based on uh, Peabody Museum specimens and um, photographs and other resources that uh, these days artists use. A lot of uh, work goes into this uh, and uh, uh, one of the important aspects of this work is visiting the collections and actually seeing these three-dimensional uh, um, specimens. James mentioned the same thing for, uh, for some of his artwork that he also likes to uh, see these physical uh, versions. So this is just a study of the ivory-billed woodpecker. And James himself uh, in the field on one of these expeditions that we've organized to the Peabody. Uh, this is another good way to uh, get to know the birds and paint them well. So some of you may be wondering why not use photography? Why go through all this trouble when you already have to paint these birds really in a very standard way? There's not much room for creativity. Why would artists bother to uh, illustrate these field guides with uh, paintings? And that's, uh, again, what something that James mentioned, this averaging. In his Oceanic Fishes project, he mentioned that he would actually illustrate them based on a single individual, and he actually cared that it was this individual. Uh, in field guides, what you actually would want is some sort of average. You actually look at a lot of images or observe a bird in different contexts and then summarize this all into one image. And it's really difficult to do uh, with photography. Here is an example of a, one of the uh, recent guides to birds of North America by Ken Kaufman and uh, his attempt to uh, show thrushes. For something as brown as these thrushes were, it's critical to know the exact shade of brown and uh, some uh, features of the facial or the spotting, uh, some of the pattern. It's really difficult to show this uh, in a successful, effective way. And uh, only slight improvement is when you actually get include multiple images of the same species as uh, Richard Crossley has done in his recent field guide. It's only last year's uh, book. I invite you all to look at this because some of these compilations are really uh, fantastic to look at, but it's not really a field guide. It's a pretty heavy 1.6 kilogram book uh, that maybe you would use, put it in, in your car as you go bird watching and then refer to when you come back from your walk. Uh, and uh, as you can expect, uh, field guides are going digital as everything. Uh, and uh, by now you can already choose among several options for your phone apps. Uh, you can, uh, actually the power of these is that uh, unlike paper field guides, you can actually have an option of uh, searching by uh, vocalizations, for example. You can keep your life list in the same uh, device. You can submit records uh, as you uh, encounter birds. Uh, and uh, there are very cool ways of kind of dichotom almost dichotomous keys where you punch in uh, what you see, color, shape, uh, season, uh, state or province, and eventually it comes up with very few options of what this could be. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, I just wanted to invite you to look at uh, this website, uh, Diane Schmidt out of University of, Cham uh, University of Illinois in uh, Urbana-Champaign. She put together this uh, rather exhaustive database of field guides to everything. Uh, and you can see from these categories, I don't know if you can actually read these numbers, but the birds, she has uh, over 1,200 uh, guides. Uh, and the second are plants with 721 wildflowers. Uh, so I guess that's representative that we're talking about birds today and birds are still number one for the field guides. Uh, there is even, and there are some guides that you can use to identify bird poop or road kills. Uh, that's only half serious. And if you are going to some of those places for which guides are not available, there is now a way to download images. Uh, for example, the uh, Handbook of Birds of the World project out of uh, Barcelona, Spain, uh, Lynx Editions are promising to make available to, uh, to subscribers all their uh, digital image versions of the images that they generated in producing this series. So in the 16 volumes, they managed to illustrate uh, all 10,000 species of birds of the world. So now you can 
uh, easily use your iPad or something to generate your own guide and use it in the field. So that's all I have. Thank you very much.